Hi everybody, this is Joe slash CC, and today I'm going to be covering how you can introduce lighting into your games inside of Construct 3. This is a really exciting effect to be able to introduce into your game, and I did my best to take the resources which were already available and make it into something that I would want to use when making my own games. So I'm going to go through an example project where I've already implemented this, so you can see this is what it could look like. And then I'm going to share the demo project that's meant to be downloaded with the effect to kind of teach you how to use the effect inside of your own games. Okay, let's go ahead and jump on in and see what this thing looks like. All right, so here's my uh, awesome Void Knight submission for Game Dev Knockout 2022, hosted by Xanderwood. Um, thank you for hosting a cool tournament, Xanderwood. That's a really cool idea. Anyways, I made this character, which was the challenge for round one. I did it in A Sprite. I brought it into Spine and animated it in there. That was the first time I ever used the tool. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that at some other point, but that was a really fun experience. But back to lighting. And then I introduced lighting into the environment for me to play around with it inside of this demo layout. So let's go ahead and full screen this. And let's give this thing uh, a, little, a little drive. Um, you know, I have to show this off even though it's not really lighting because I thought it was super cool. Uh, that's my uh, hammer slam. It does array casts and figures out how to time the slamming of the hammer on the ground each time. Anyways, this is the lighting. And you can see here, I've kind of intentionally dimmed the uh, background environment. And I'm providing lighting in real time on these assets. And if you have looked into lighting in the past, there's these things called like normal maps and it gets complicated really quickly and I don't even understand all of it, uh, but I understood enough to figure out how to put this effect together. And thankfully I was standing on the shoulders of others who have already worked on this problem and have even created Construct 3 effects in the past. Thank you to McCall. I'm gonna go over to his page now for introducing the uh, normal map extended as well as the normal map procedural to Construct 3. These were ports of some existing uh, effects that already were available, I think for C2. And this normal map procedural actually was implemented from this shader by uh, Nikos here. And you can see, you know, kind of the similar effect going on in his demo page here. But back to the Construct 3 effect. Um, I really liked these two effects and I started to play with these and I wanted to use them as is. Uh, but, you know, when you get into the demo projects, let's go ahead and open this. Um, you can see oh, it has a really cool effect going on. Um, but let's go ahead and I want to show you something. Um, this, oh, that's the floor, is a normal map. Oh, there we go. This is a normal map. And it lets us kind of know how the light should respond um, to the object, right? And people can make these by hand, which takes forever. <laughs> you can render it if you're in a 3D engine. Um, you can, there's some other tools out there to try to take 2D assets and create these quickly. Uh, but it's a lot of work to create normal maps for everything. So immediately I was like, well, I'm lazy. I really don't want to have to create normal maps for everything. So let's hold on to this. I, I, I liked the controls of the coloring. You know, I can change it from red and green and blue and all these different things. I really liked all the controls of this uh, effect, but I didn't want to make normal maps because <laughs> I tried and it was it was painstakingly difficult uh, for all the different assets inside of a layout. So then I was like, ah, well, great. We have this normal procedural uh, effect. Um, let's just use this. And you know what's cool about this is there's there's no normal map. Oh, that's a separate thing. There we go. It's just a picture, right? And guess what? It has a pretty cool effect. All right, well, that's cool. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll just use this thing. But it didn't quite have all the same uh, controls that I wanted from the other one. And I wanted multiple lights. I didn't want just one light. So I was kind of stuck. And I was tempted to give up, but I was like, you know what? I've never made an effect before, so I'm going to make an effect. And by make, I'm really just gonna copy a bunch of code from one effect and another effect and put it together. And think that William McCall also helped me out a little bit. And I was able to do that. Um, I'm not going to cover it, but if you ever try to make effects, and some of you might be experts out there who are watching this, I certainly was not. Uh, this C3 IDE tool can be super helpful in organizing your add-ons and your effects. Go ahead and Google that. You'll be able to find a repository to download it from. 
And ultimately, when you create an effect, and a lot of you have probably installed C3 add-ons into uh, Construct 3, if you come here, view, um, add-on manager, this is where you install your new add-on, right? Uh, and I've got a bunch of them. As you can see here, look, procedural lighting, Fusel CC. Yes, first one I've ever made. And by made, I mean copied two together and kind of tweaked it slightly. Um, what I ended up doing was I took that and thankfully uh, I was able to figure out this whole gamut of things. And you know what? I said, one light is not enough. The other uh, one allowed you to have up to three lights. I'm gonna make it have up to 50 lights and I'm pretty pumped about it. So now let's go on in and understand how this, how this works. Um, if we go over now to the demo project, and this is what I'm gonna make available for download on itch. Let's, let's take a look at this. Um, on my layout, I'm using an existing uh, kind of demo layout I had for a tile set where I did some platformer controls and I implemented the lighting effect in there. And what I did was I threw the things that I wanted to have the lighting effect into two different families, normal maps and normal map tile maps, because you can't have objects of different types inside of the same family. If you want this to work on tile maps and sprites, for instance, you need to have two different families for normal maps. If you also have a canvas, you'll have to do that separately. In this example, I do use a canvas. Um, in the game I did for Xanderwood, I had the spine plugin, so it was a spine object, so I needed to do it on top of that one. For, for each of these, this is where you kind of group what you want to apply to it and you apply the effect. Now, because I made this thing able to control up to 50 lights with 16 parameters each, that's a crap load of parameters in here. So um, <laughs> there's uh, quite a few things to set. So I don't recommend you set them manually by going through here and saying, okay, now I'm gonna change the X position to this and the Y position to this and the red color to this and the green color to this. You should set it up in your event sheets. And I created a little dashboard here to show how you can do that. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a play. All right. Okay, so you can see here, um, I've got my, my lighting turned on. I only have two lights turned on right now. I've got one that's kind of moving around with my mouse, right? And I got one up here. If I turn this on, let's just say I want to make my light one um, red and blue. What does that make? Purple, right? <laughs> All right, I got a purple light. Perfect. All right, let's say I want to turn on light number three, which is one of these. Just, let's just check it on. And, you know, I can make like a really hard limit where I cut it off, right? Like a, kind of like a spotlight. Um, I can change how it fades in and out with these fall off parameters. There's ways that this will let you really fine tune the look of your light. This fall off V1, V2, and V3. You can change your X, Y, and Z position. I'm not using like the Z position of the recent 3D effects. This is just, it goes into the effect and it helps, you know, you know, calculate how far away and how big to make the circle, right? So you can use this. Um, and then you can set your colors, obviously, how bright it is. And then this ambient uh, is pretty cool. This sets it for the entire environment, right? And what I will tell you is if you decide to turn on like 50 lights, these are all getting summed. So you have to be careful about how you continue to turn on lights with ambient luminosity. Otherwise, it'll just keep getting brighter and brighter and brighter until everything's like ultra bright <laughs> and it won't look good. So anyways, you got up to 50 lights to play with and you can turn them all on and you know have them mix and look cool and let's have this one be like green over here yeah and let's have number five i don't know is that one going in a circle no that one's not going in a circle that'll be red okay let's let's find one that's like looping i think this one is looping yes it is okay and let's have this one be blue okay something like that all right so as you can see here, we've got all these things mixing and I've also got it working on my canvas map. I've got it working on the tile map and I've got it working on the sprites. So, you know, this is the effect that you can download from my itch page and this demo will be available and you can go through the code at your own point at your own time. I will do a brief walkthrough right now, but feel free to go and download it and start going through it. If you did like this video, consider uh, subscribing, give me a thumbs up. Okay, so coming into the event sheet, uh, 
really I'm only going to focus on this procedural lighting because this is what you're going to bring into your game and how what you're going to focus on, making sure it's set up and assigned to your right objects that are sitting inside of your light family um, or your normal map families, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a couple of global variables I set up, which is window height, window width, WWWH, and then these starting uh, values for lights. Feel free to use these or tweak them to something else to quickly get something up and running. And what I'm doing is on the start of the layout, I'm setting some of the control panel items, so don't worry about that. I'm also going ahead and inside of my light family, and this is where I'm storing my information. So I created for each of my lights, a family called light. And I have these instance variables, which you go through and it's effectively each of the parameters that I can set on the effect, uh, minus the X, Y, uh, X and Y position, because I already know what the X and Y is. I don't need to create an, an extra instance variable for it. So I've got that inside of the family. Um, I'm going ahead and setting it equal to the start. So right away, that family variable has that parameter. Coming down further, what I do is I loop through each one. Remember, this is still inside of my on start of layout. And I am saying, hey, at the very, very beginning, go ahead and turn on light number two. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to start with light two, three, four, eight, and 10, just put them all right here. It'll turn them on, right? Uh, that's just some setup stuff. Okay, so now we're inside of the every tick. And this is where you kind of need to pay attention. Um, First and foremost, we're setting it our window width equal to the viewport width and our window height to the viewport height. Uh, because I have that, that kind of fire following my mouse, that's going on right here. And then what I'm doing is I'm always updating my uh, families for my normal maps for their zero and one, which is the window width and window height. Remember, if you come here, parameter zero is screen X, it's screen Y. And that allows so that when you resize the window and everything, it's, it's still working. Okay, coming on in, then you do a loop, and we're going to go through each of our lights now. And first we're going to say, okay, is it on or off? And this is looking at the parameters, sorry, the instance variables from the family of each light. And if you look here, we've got all these plus this Boolean of true or false for on off. If it is on, you know, we're going to set the parameter for each of the ones that we have normal maps for. So if you only want to do it the tile maps, you only need tile maps. If you only want to do it for sprites, you only do sprites. If you don't want to use a family scheme and you just want to do it on specific sprites or objects, feel free to do that. But this is where you need to set it, right? Um, and because you can't have different object types inside the same family, I have it repeated here three times. Uh, and I'm turning it on. And then uh, similarly, if it's off, turn it off. I have here ignore number one because I have the effect always on for light one. Uh, if you don't want light one to be on at all, just disable the effect. But you should always, if you turn on the effect, light one's gonna be on. Um, and then going ahead, if it is light number one, you know, going ahead and setting all of these parameters to this value, um, which is stored on the light itself. Otherwise, we're gonna check if it is on, do this. The reason it's separated is because I made the decision when I made the effect that it's always on. So I had to do a, a check here. So these are based off whether or not it's on off. Um, I probably could combine this if I really thought about it. Uh, feel free to. But this is doing the same thing. You're setting each of these normal map variables to the value stored on the family instance variable. And you can see here I'm using this loop index times 16. That's because inside of these parameters, after the first three or whatever, zero, one, and two, X resolution, Y resolution, and normal depth, these are just groups of 16 parameters repeating itself for each light. So feel free to loop through and use the loop index and multiply it by 16. So you only have to set this once. And that's really the core of it. That's what you need in your game. This underneath here is really just my little control panel for the playground. And it lets me do some sliders and set the variables to uh, be what I want from the control panel onto the light family instance variable. And then subsequently, when it goes through that every tick for loop up above, it changes the parameters on those objects. One thing that's kind of an interesting thing to think about is, and I did do this in the game I showed you at the very beginning, is you can take this lighting effect and for maybe tile maps, it's brighter, but on your character, it's less bright because you're worried about it washing out your character or you want your character to have that look of it being, you know, more in front of the light. So 
think about how you can apply that inside of your games and you can achieve some really interesting uh, lighting effects with this. I mean, giving this a play again, I mean, I was really pumped with how this lighting effect turned out and I'm really excited that I can have up to 15 lights. Um, going on back to my Void Knight example, I mean, this thing was so fun to put together and I really, really think the results were pretty awesome. So guys, uh, go ahead and go to the itch link down below. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you enjoyed the channel. And also uh, I wanna bring up one other point is that awesome uh, theme that I use, if you guys are wondering what this theme is, view add-on manager. Uh, this is actually uh, by Mitsu Hashish, uh, this, this dark CSS or dark, right? Uh, he is uh, got this awesome theme out there uh, that you, know, you can go and buy it on itch. I'll put the link down below. Um, he's also running a raffle right now that you can go ahead and put your name in the hat and he's gonna give away a few for free. And lastly, thank you to all my patient supporters, Denise, Benz, Mr. Mike on a bike, Ling Ching Ming, McCall, and James Welch. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate your support. Uh, do note that I will probably be a little delayed on my next video. I'm expecting our third child to arrive any day. So that will probably put a kink in my ability to produce videos. So with that said, hopefully I'll see you soon. Uh, but if there's a little bit of a delay, that is why. And thank you, everybody. Good luck in your game dev journey.